All right, and we're live. Welcome everyone to another binge worthy webinar short. I am Joy Apple, Joy of SharePoint. I have with me Richard Calderon. Welcome Richard, how are you today? I'm doing pretty well, doing pretty well. It's a little bit sunny outside today, so I'm enjoying at least looking out the window, put it that way. It is, it is gorgeous <laughs> in Oklahoma as well. Yeah. Well, folks, we are so happy you're here with us. We're going to be talking about files inside of Microsoft Teams. Uh, if you've been joining us, I think we're six episodes in now. Right. Yes, Stacy says that's correct. Teams is an onion, and it's like the more you start peeling back the layers, the more you see there is to it. And one of the big areas where it can start to get a little I say it makes my brain itch is when we're thinking about where files are. We put them in Teams, but where are they really? How do I work with them? What about that button called files on the left rail? Is that the same as the files inside my channels? Mm -hmm. there's, yeah, there's so much to it. So Richard and I are going to talk through that with you all today. Um, if you this is your first time joining us, welcome. We are thrilled that you're here. Uh, Richard and I both work for Paint Group. Uh, I'm a modern workplace strategist and a service adoption specialist. Been playing with Microsoft toys for a, over 11, going on 12 years this summer. <laughs> Hard to Fantastic. Play. Fantastic. Thanks, Joy. Yeah, so I'm Richard Calderon. I'm also a modern workplace strategist like Joy here at Paint. And, uh, you know, to me, that means that we just love talking about all things Microsoft 365 related. Um, not just on the technology, although we're technology geeks at heart, but also on the business side, trying to really understand, you know, what is it about leveraging these new ways of working and these new tools that's going to help impact your business positively? Um, that's what we love to talk about. So um, been doing this for a long time as well. And so that's why we wanted to bring these webinar series to you all. So again, thanks for joining. Um, you can see our Twitter handles here at the bottom of the screen. We'll also have some other contact info for you. Um, kind of at the tail end of the slide. So please definitely connect with us. We love interacting with folks and um, hoping that we can help you out. I'm uh, going to jump to a few poll questions here. It's sort of the pattern that we typically have. Um, a lot of it is just to try to get to know who's who in the room and, and a little bit of an understanding around the topics specifically. So um, a couple of different ways you can get to the polls. You can get to them from the links that should be in the Q&A. Also, we're using Microsoft Forms, which is a service that's built right into Office 365. Many of you maybe have it without even realizing it. Um, you notice here that when you click on the share button, by the way, there's a couple of different ways you can share a particular survey with others in the organization. You can certainly copy a link. That's, what, that's how you're getting to it now. But whether you knew it or not, this second option here is actually going to generate a QR code that's specific to this particular question or this poll in this case. Um, so if you have your mobile device handy, you could just whip it out, turn the camera on, point it at the screen, scan that QR code, and then respond to the questions also from your mobile device. It's really pretty easy to do. So again, all that's built right into forms. So just trying to get a sense of who's in the room today. So what are your job roles? Um, so I'm going to flip over to responses, just sort of see what we're getting at the moment. So we've got about, uh, about nine or so responses coming in, a few more coming in. Quite a few folks that are um, IT pros. Again, welcome. Thanks for joining us. And a number of folks from the business as well, too. Um, some management level roles as well. So awesome. Thanks for weighing in on the poll question. Again, feel free to jump in and answer these questions anywhere along the way. We love being able to just have an understanding as to who's participating. I'm going to jump to poll question number two. Same as I did before, I'll go ahead and throw up the QR code. So if you just want to scan this on your phone, you could grab that uh, QR code there, hit that link. But um, so I want to understand, like, where do you store or where are most of your work files residing today? And you can select any and all that apply there, file shares sitting on your desktop in SharePoint, in OneDrive, or just any and everywhere, and it being pretty chaotic. So um, if you would, we'd love to be able to understand. Um, how you are looking at or storing where your files are, where they reside. So a number of questions, number of responses rather, got a good handful that are doing this in OneDrive. Awesome, fantastic. Some in SharePoint, a few that are admitting that you store your stuff on your desktop. Yeah, it's okay, not a, not a problem, especially if you're using OneDrive. We're going to talk more about that in depth, um, probably in another webinar, I would suspect. Um, and then a few- I think we need to make it everywhere. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so fantastic. Again, feel free to answer any of these along the way, and then um, feel free to answer this one if you'd like to. I'll throw the QR code up. You know, I need to do uh, this. <laughs> so just just curious to know, like, when was the last time you showered? Did you shower this morning? Did you shower yesterday? A few days ago? Maybe you can't really remember because every day ends in DAY. Um, or you know, if you just prefer not to answer, that's fine too. Just kind of curious. You know, everybody's doing their own thing right now when working from home. But as far as those that are in the room today, um, maybe no one's answering the poll at the moment because everybody just chose not to respond to this one. I'm going to throw the QR code. I'll throw the QR code back up there again. I mean, it is a little personal, Richard. Yeah, I guess that's true. It is a little bit on the personal. <laughs> side, but, um, okay, so unless we have uh, a link that maybe was dead on this one or what have you, no big deal. If you can get to that link later and be able to answer that one. Uh, I was I able to get fun. it to work on the QR code just for okay. what it's worth. All right, fantastic, fantastic. Here, I'll do a page refresh here briefly and just see if maybe that might have been what was holding it up in forms. Oh, okay, we are, to, we are oh, getting, we are getting okay. after all, so thank you. Okay, well, that's good to know. Uh, we've got a few that are being honest and say they can't really recall. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> and totally get it if it's just one of those questions like, I'm not going to answer that. No big, no big deal. Okay, thanks again for participating in that. Appreciate you guys. So again, talking about files and teams. So we've been talking about a number of things around teams, kind of just core basics in the past webinars. Um, if you missed any of those, feel free to go grab those links. You can hit them off of the paid website. Um, but today we're going to drill a little bit deeper into some of the specific functionality. We wanted to talk about files. And I am going to try to conserve some bandwidth on my end and turn off my video cam just to see if that'll help out on the network side a little bit. Um, so in terms of files in Teams, um, probably the most important thing really to just understand from uh, kind of how things are working behind the scenes is that files in Teams are basically that it's embedded in, in Office 365 through the thing that really handles files well in Office 365, which is SharePoint. OneDrive is also a part of that as well too. For those of you that are familiar, you know, OneDrive really sits on top of the SharePoint framework, if you will in the cloud in Office 365. So we kind of talk about those things interchangeably to a certain extent. But at the end of the day, when you're uploading a file into a team or into Teams, really you're storing and uploading those files in either SharePoint or in OneDrive. And the delineation between that is if you're doing it inside the context of a team workspace, then you're sharing that content. It's kind of shared ownership of that information. That's being stored in a SharePoint document library. We're going to kind of unpack that a little bit more here in a minute too. But if you're sharing files in a chat, so one on one or one to many in a group chat, that's actually being stored inside of OneDrive. And specifically, it's being stored in the OneDrive of the person who's initiating the share. So if I'm wanting to share a file with Joy and Stacy so that they can collaborate along with that with me, in doing that through chat, it's actually going to store it in my OneDrive. And without me having to do anything, it's just automatically giving them access to that file so that they can edit and co-author along with me. So it's actually pretty cool the way that Microsoft architected that. Um, to kind of emphasize, and I'm interested to hear Joy's take on this, you know, Teams is certainly not a document management tool. Joy, do you want to kind of weigh in on how you describe this? Oh, I would love to. <laughs> so I have opinions. And if, if, you're, if you're not new to us, then you know we have opinions, right? Yeah. But Teams is not in the business of managing your files. And you say, but Joy, when I upload something to files, I'm putting it in Teams. No, you're not. But it sure feels like we are, right? Because we go to our team, we go to our channel, we maybe drop it in the chat and that mention so people can see we're doing it. Or perhaps we go straight to files and we drag and drop and upload there. But what that really is, um, and in case you caught it, by the way, pop quiz, if anyone can answer my, what my background was, you're going to get bonus points. Um, I know you. <laughs> no, you can't answer, you know. But I want to show my nerdiness here. It's a wormhole. It basically, when we put something in files and teams, it's taking that data and really putting it in SharePoint because SharePoint is our document 
management tool. And you say, but wait, Richard just said if I'm doing it in chat, then it's OneDrive. But he, he is. That is absolutely 5,000% correct. And OneDrive is baby SharePoint. Yeah. So either way you go, SharePoint is involved one way or the other. Um, Teams is in the business of making it easy to get to our stuff. SharePoint's yep. in the business of managing files. So that's my, I don't know, three cents worth might be a little bit more than two. No, I think I think that's great. I think, you know, the, that statement at the bottom of the slide here really kind of says it all. You know, Teams really just makes it easy to be able to share and access those files. So to the business user, you know, you're kind of abstracting them from having to even really care. Is it going into SharePoint? Is it going into OneDrive? They're just putting those files into Teams, and that's, for the most part, what they need to know. Um, remember also that when we talked about Teams and then we talked about channels, and channels are ways of segmenting your team or kind of subdividing your team into um, different pieces that allow you to have conversations and specific files and other apps, et cetera that are specific to a topic or a project or anything, really. Channels can be fairly arbitrary, whatever makes sense to the team. But when it comes to files and file management in Teams, probably the thing to just understand is that channels create folders inside the SharePoint document library of the team. So again, there's a SharePoint site behind the scenes. There's a document library inside that particular SharePoint site. And in that document library, you've got a series of folders. Those folders, as you can see from this screenshot here, equate one-to-one -to, -one to the channels that you're creating. Kind of pro tip here for those ITs folks in the room. Um, right now, if you had to go in and rename a channel in Teams, it does not automatically rename those folders in SharePoint. So not, not a bad thing necessarily, except that it could be confusing to some of your users if they are peeking behind the covers and they're looking on the SharePoint side, could be confusing. And then pro tip number two, which is absolutely a no-no, if somebody decides to go into SharePoint and rename one of these folders that is equating to a channel, it will absolutely break the relationship between that folder and Teams. So something I think maybe is on Microsoft's radar to see if they can figure out how to align those two things and keep them sync. But today, just so you know, um, if you end up renaming things, you can potentially cause a little bit of problem. So just something to keep in mind. Um, avoid creating additional folders in files. Again, this is something that's near and dear to our hearts around SharePoint. Uh, you know, as to the previous slide, when you create a channel, it's creating a folder in that document library you absolutely can continue to create new folders. There's nothing to prevent you from doing that inside the channel, inside those files. But it's more of a matter of should you? Should you do that? Should you start <laughs> creating more folders within folders and files within those folders? What do you feel about that, Joy? Do you want to chime in on that? Well, when you said that, I heard my mom saying, just because you can doesn't <laughs> mean you should. Exactly. Right. And there's yeah. a couple of reasons. It's not just because Richard said so. Um, here's a good takeaway, and it kind of blows people's minds if they're not used to the metadata side of SharePoint. Folders are the F word in SharePoint. <laughs> yeah, but we're talking about Teams, yeah? And files live in SharePoint, and Teams gets us there, right? It's that whole itchy brain onion situation. Um, but try creating a channel instead of a folder and files and see how that works. Because as Richard said, your channel equals a folder. So that is your folder. And your folder is gonna do two things for you, your channel. It's gonna organize your content and your conversations. So it's a twofer, two birds, one folder, or channel as the case may be. If you're creating a subfolder and files, odds are you're gonna to wanna to talk about that in some way by putting it in a new channel you're getting a place for that conversation to stay organized and a place for your content to be organized so that's my opinion and we could do a whole webinar on just that <laughs> certainly good, certainly good. And, and if some of those concepts maybe don't quite sink in for you now i think they'll make a little bit more sense when we do a little bit of demoing here for you 
But uh, yeah, so again, be intentional when you're thinking about structuring your content in Teams, and especially when it comes to folders and files, et cetera, et cetera. When you are, yes. We have some questions. Sure. You want to dig in some more or you want to take a couple of questions? Let's, let's take them as they're coming. Okay, so, so if files are shared in a chat, does that mean the file saved to OneDrive is a discrete copy for each person? Put another way, does sharing the file in a chat restrict collaborative editing of that file? So by design, when you, let's say I want to share a file with Joy inside of a chat, as I mentioned earlier, um, it's going to store that file inside the OneDrive of the person who initiated the share. So in this case, it would store it in my OneDrive. By the sheer nature of the fact that I'm now sharing that file with Joy inside of a chat, it is essentially giving Joy edit rights to that file without me having to go in and monkey around with permissions or do anything. That single action of me uploading a file in a chat, sharing it with Joy and hitting send uh, is doing all of that at one time. And again, that's by design. The, the intent inside of Teams in this case is that if I'm doing that, it's most likely because I want her to have the ability to be able to edit along with me and do a little bit of co-authoring. Um, not so much in the sense of just wanting to have something that she could view only. If that was the case, well, more than likely we'd probably share it in a different way. What do you think about that, Joy? Yeah, totally agree. If I wanted Richard to have eyes on something but not edit it, I would use the share feature inside of that Office document and give him, you know, I would uncheck the box that lets mm. him edit. Yeah. That's what I would do. I would not ever, as much as we can help it, create a copy and send that to him, because now I've got two copies of that document I have to manage, and that feels like work now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, agree 100%. Yeah, it is a good question, because I think we've been asked that either in another webinar or in some other, some other form, where, uh, you know, today, if you do sharing of a file through Outlook um, via OneDrive, before you hit send, you have the option of changing the permission on that file so that you can say, do I want the person to be able to view this only or do I want them to be able to edit only? And that's useful because in that case, maybe you do just want them to only see and not be able to edit the file. So it seems logical that they would bring that same capability into Teams chat. Um, just not aware of that at the moment, and I haven't necessarily seen that in the, the roadmap, but it doesn't mean it's not there. More, more than likely, if it's anywhere, it's probably in the user voice. So we can look into that and see and, and follow up with you guys on that. Other questions, Stacey, as well? Yes, um, I see a folder named email messages. Was that created automatically when I forwarded an email to a channel? That's exactly right. That's exactly that. If you if you test that out on a kind of a fresh brand new channel at some point uh, that had that does not have that folder and then you forward a message into uh, that channel, then that's exactly what you're going to see. You're going to see that folder that gets created for that purpose. Um, are document sets supported in teams created by SharePoint? Uh, we still operate in classic in many SharePoint sites or in main SharePoint sites, I should say. You know, I'm not as familiar with that. Joy, do you know about the document sets and how that so, relates? So sort of, kind of, kind of, sort of. So Teams is only aware of the folders that are created with the channel. So when you create a channel, yeah. that folder gets created in the connected documents library. That is the only thing that Teams is natively aware of. So if you had document sets that you're working in in other libraries, um, you could even put one in that documents library if you wanted to. Personally, I wouldn't because that we recommend you just let Teams own the documents library. Yeah. You could go get the URL so you could add a tab. And <laughs> funny enough, yeah. this day we're talking about tabs, yeah. but uh, <laughs> you could create a tab to the library where you've created those document sets right. and could surface them that way. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking of doing too. Oh, this is this is lists, but yeah, we are coincidentally enough going to be having a whole webinar focused around adding tabs and some of the really slick things that you could do with tabs inside of Teams channels. And so, uh, please do register for that webinar as well, and come join us. And and hopefully, those things will align with um, some of the maybe not kind of the core ways that Teams is intended to be used but some of the really creative and clever ways that you can pull in content into Teams, such as what Joy was describing. Maybe if you had some other libraries that you wanted to surface in the view, et cetera. So I just kind of flipped over here to a demonstration environment because sometimes it's just easier just to, to kind of get some of these things in your head by seeing them work. Um, so there's a few things that I thought would be really useful just to kind of highlight around files uh, in terms of working in Teams. Number one, maybe kind of the most obvious one, is that you know we've talked about this left hand rail being kind of your best friend in teams in terms of being able to keep you oriented with what functionality are you trying to get into at the moment and so i think they generally refer to these as apps in teams you got the teams app and a calendar app well there's a files app if you will on the left hand rail here and um you know kind of right out of the gate just just for your awareness there's a couple of really clever things that microsoft did here Number one is they're thinking about, you know, the fact that they know who you are by your identity in Office 365 allows them, that is the graph inside of Microsoft Office 365, to really understand a number of things about you. At a bare minimum, what have you been working on recently? So one of the great things is that you get this recent view or recent view that shows you a number of different files and documents that you have accessed. You'll notice here from the locations, that it's really from across a number of different places. So I've been accessing files and logged in as this um, demo user, uh, but this demo user, Megan, has been accessing these files across a number of different locations here inside of Office 365. So this could be whether this is in Teams, or you notice here that this particular file is sitting in Megan's OneDrive too, for that matter. So again, all of these files that have been worked on recently come up here. Um, you can also get a sort of a single view specifically to files that are stored in Teams. And again, for those of you that are following along, we know that that's really being stored inside of SharePoint in this case. So these are all uh, the SharePoint sites and then the libraries themselves where these files are being stored. So you have the ability to be able to get to these files inside of Teams relatively easily here too. And then something that I'll be quite honest, I don't do as often as I probably could, but you can even get straight to your OneDrive files right here from the Files app in Teams as well too, because again, this is just a view directly into uh, this user Megan's OneDrive. You could do the sync directly from here. You can do do not new documents from here. Again, these are all going to be of Office type documents. You can upload directly. You could even drag and drop files into this interface and they'll just upload directly into your OneDrive. And um, then of course, if you wanted to, you could just crack open OneDrive in a browser here as well, okay? So a really useful view to be able to come into the files tab to be able to navigate back and forth from files in a couple of different ways. But then we did mention, just so we can kind of hopefully bring the story full circle, mentioned a couple of different ways of sharing files inside of Teams. One would be sort of private file sharing, that is through chat. Again, those of you that remember, chat is private communications, one-to-one -one or one-to-many in a group chat between you and, and others in the organization. No one else has access to that. But if I wanted to be able to share a file, say for example, with Lydia, and I think Joy is logged in as Lydia right now, so we have the ability to kind of interact in this way. It's as easy as down here at the very bottom where you're keying in a new message, this third icon from the left is the paperclip attach icon. And when you do this in chat, you get one of two choices. You can either choose from your existing OneDrive files. And when you choose a file from OneDrive, you simply hit share. And then again, this is where I think if there's an improvement that Microsoft could make is give me an option here somewhere to change the permissions on this if, if it was meaningful so that I could make it only read only or in the case of the default, make it editable. Um, but I can do that here and it comes to my OneDrive, or I can also attach here and say upload from my computer. It's going to open up you know, the, the Windows Explorer view, just like you would expect. When I do that, it's gonna then upload those files or that file or files into OneDrive so that I can then share it with someone, okay? 
So again, a couple of different ways that you can share files here. I'll go ahead and share and uh, just say, hi, Lydia, you know, can you take a look at this? Review and then hit send and it's off to the races, okay? And it's as easy as that. It gives you a little pop-up here that says I've shared this file. Um, Lydia has read receipts on, on her chat side. That is Joy has read receipts on. So as you can see, you know, it tells me that she's seen that. She can reply. We can click on this file here, write in Teams in the Teams interface. You notice that it, in this case, it's an Office document, a Word document. So it just opens it up right inside of Teams. It's really, it's being powered by, in this case, Word Online, but it's running inside the context of Teams. So we don't have to worry about it, cracking it open in another browser. Um, you certainly could, if you wanted to, open this up in another, uh, open it up in the desktop app rather. So there's an, uh, an, uh, a toolbar option here to say, I wanna open this up in the desktop app for Word. You can see that Lydia is actually in the document right now because I can see her little avatar right there that says that she's in there editing the document. So we're co-authoring using all the benefits of co-authoring. You notice that on the right-hand side of the screen over here, we've got the ongoing conversation that we can have about this document. Um, we can interact and have a conversation entirely virtually without even having to be on the phone if we didn't want to. We could just be doing this through chat, co-authoring away, making edits, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a really, really slick interface that Microsoft has come up with, with being able to, in this case, again, simply and easily share a file with one or more people through the chat interface and then be able to co-author in real time, see the changes that are being made, and then also on this side pane, continue to have conversations, okay? I will say one thing, just for clarity, conversations around a document in Teams are not the same as comments. So comments, in this case for Word, is what you think about comments in a Word document. These are gonna be embedded inside the document so that people can view the comments about a particular um, a particular piece of content or so forth or a paragraph or what have you. So these are different than the conversations. The conversations are happening inside the channel posts for that particular team channel, okay? So just something to kind of be aware of. But if you haven't had a chance to try this, give it a try. I think it's pretty great. Joy, any thoughts around kind of how you've seen this used or the benefits that you find of this? I love the fact that we can have conversation while we're both in the document. Yeah. Because let's be real, right now we're working from home. You may have kids running around the house. You have teenagers running around the house. You may have spouses, whoever, running around the house. And that can make things a little more difficult. It could be a little louder, uh, whatever. Maybe you're not used to working at home with your dogs and you never realized how horrible they are when the mailman comes. So you don't want to get on a call because it's loud, it's noisy. You can chat, you can talk about what you're doing. I could come in here and ask, do you have the new logo? And then we see that Joy can't type, <laughs> struggle. So we can have these conversations real time while we're working on the document mm -hmm. and co-authoring if you've never done it. It does enforce some manners. So Richard as Megan is clicked inside of that image up top. Um, I can see his cursor right around international. Mm -hmm. Because that's where Richard has his mark, his um, mouse, I cannot edit in there right now. So yeah. I went below and I changed some names around. So you can't overwrite someone while they're working. And yeah. you can have many people in a document. I think the last time I heard it was 25. That seems ambitious. But you yeah. could have up to 25 people uh, working in the same document at the same time. For those massive spreadsheets that some of you numbers people pass around, that might really reduce the wait time of getting things in by a certain deadline. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. So again, you know, we we find this extremely useful just ourselves in running business, but all of our customers that we've effectively helped them understand how this works um, have found a number of different benefits of this mm -hmm. and actually find some creative ways of doing this communication that maybe we haven't even thought about before. So. Definitely weigh in. If you've used this before, um, please chime in on the Q&A. We'd love to hear some ideas from you on ways that you found this to be beneficial to you. Okay, so that's sharing files simply through chat. Again, just to keep in mind, that is in fact being stored inside of OneDrive. 
um, there is going to be a file or sorry, excuse me, a folder that gets created. I'll just show you here briefly in the OneDrive of the person who shared the file is going to be right here. This happens to be at the top because it's just showing it when it was uh, when it was modified in this case, but there's a folder that gets created called Microsoft Teams chat files inside of the OneDrive. And uh, it's always when, the when you're trying to demo something, not showing that here at the moment, but nonetheless, that's the folder that gets created whenever you're in fact sharing files through OneDrive. Okay, on the team side, because again, this is really where probably most people tend to think about files and where files inside of teams. Um, there's a number of different things to really kind of think about. Again, by and large, uh, all of these files are being stored in the SharePoint document library that's attached to this particular team. And then as we mentioned before, there are gonna be folders per channels, et cetera, et cetera. So what you'll see here across the top is you've got really the, the, the same rich interface that you get when you're looking at a SharePoint library in terms of the ability to say, um, I wanna create a new document here. Again, similar to what we saw in OneDrive a minute ago. I want to upload a file, I can do a file or entire folder. Remember, you can also drag and drop files into this interface if you'd like. It's really straightforward to do. You can sync files here from this library uh, or this particular channel to your desktop so that you have them on your PC. Again, that's happening through the OneDrive sync tool and a number of different things that you can do here. I neglected to mention a second ago in this example. So I'm in this market project team I'm inside this channel called research and development. If I were in the posts tab, again up here up top, where the team is able to converse about anything related to, in this case, research and development for the marketing project. Again, down here at the very bottom of the screen, same paradigm as it was inside of chat. I would use this second icon here, the little paper clip, so there's a, a obvious visual to do an attach. You'll notice a slight difference here than when you do attaching of a file inside of chat in that you get a couple of additional things to choose from in this case. You can choose from recent. We talked about recent a minute ago. So if I choose from recent, it's going to show me a very similar view, if not the same view of the files that we looked at in that recent view on the files app. So if I know I was just working on something recently like this international marketing strategy doc, I can select that. And in this case, because that file was sitting in my OneDrive, notice that it gives me an option to upload a copy of that here into Teams. So basically what it's saying is you had that file in OneDrive, you want to copy it over into Teams, which is really going into SharePoint, and then you could use that to share from here, okay? Similarly, um, if I did this attach again, I could say I want to browse Teams and channels. This is a really useful way to do this. Now, a nuance here is that if I want to, you notice that by default, it's showing me the files that are inside of this team channel. I could very easily select one of these files. And when, it, when you do that, it lights up this option to say, share a link. So I'll click on that. And what you'll see is it, it looks like it's really kind of attaching the document here, but in reality, it's basically just sharing, pointing a link to this document. When I click send, everybody that has access uh, to this, this post in the team will be able to get access to that file because it's really just a link to where that file lives. But I'll also show you the slight difference that if I go attach again, choose browse teams and channels, and then now let's say I wanted to go find a file that exists somewhere outside of this channel or somewhere outside of this team even for that matter. You can use this option here to navigate your way around. You notice the little up arrow. So if I click up, it's gonna take me up one folder level, quote unquote, okay? So in this case, these are all of the different folders inside the Mark 8 project team. So again, I was in research and development, but these are other channels. So I could drill into other channels here. I could go into the digital assets web channel and there are these other files. So notice that there's a slight difference here in this case. I can share a link to this because it exists inside of this team. Or if I really wanted to, I could also upload a copy of this, which is basically taking a copy of that file from where it lives today and, and copying it over into the channel where I'm having this conversation. So there's a couple of different options you could do depending on what makes sense to you in this case. 
But then also what I'll point out is that if you decide that, you know, I want to go and share a file that's even above and beyond outside this particular team, you can navigate up higher. So I just clicked on the arrow again. And now this is getting me a view of all these different teams that I have access to. And if you're like me and Joy, this list goes on and on and on and on. <laughs> um, but you could choose files from another team, for example. So let's say I wanted to go into sales and marketing and I wanted to go into monthly reports and I wanted to choose a file from here. You notice that you can certainly do that, but the only choice that you get there when you're crossing over teams in this case, so you're going from the marketing project team outside into another team, is to in fact upload a copy. So again, what's doing behind the scenes is it's taking a copy of that file moving it over into the channel where this conversation is happening. So I wanted to just point those things out to you again, because there's some nuances in mm. sharing a file, depending on from where you're sharing it. And then just to kind of round it all out here. Lastly, if you did attach and you said I wanted to do from OneDrive, that's going to upload copies just like you said a minute ago. So I want to take this and upload a copy from my OneDrive. Or if I wanted to, I could clearly just say I want to browse my computer, upload from my computer. That is clearly taking a copy of it. Just taking a copy of it off of your desktop, moving it into uh, the Teams channel in this case. Okay, so lots, lots to kind of cover there, but wanted to just be clear on kind of how that's working. Anything else, Joy, to kind of add around that experience? One thought. Sure. Before you ever click any word that says copy, stop and think mm -hmm. because now you've got two versions of that document living in the wilds is that appropriate exactly. sometimes it is yeah sometimes it absolutely is sometimes the sales team is going to need their own copy apart from marketing or hr might need it apart from operations but as i have myself done I will I will totally tell on myself. I have taken content out of my OneDrive, put copies of it into Teams, and now I'm going, well, crap. This copy is a different version than that copy, and I really need them to be synced, especially like training outlines. I update one, now I've got the old one sitting in my OneDrive. Yeah. Right, bad on me. I did not stop and think about what I was doing. So it's just, that's, that's my food for thought. If you can just share a link, do it, just do it, just do it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So on that note, let's pivot a little bit into kind of what people think about when they think about files inside of a team. So again, we talked about how through conversations or posts rather, you could share a file easily and there's some different ways that that does that depending on from where you're sharing a file. But then up here in the channel again, you know, I've got a number of different tabs. The second tab here next to post is the one call files. This is where people tend to kind of think to really go to get to these files right out of the gate. So again, as you can see, there's a number of files that are sitting here as well as a number of folders that are sitting here. Um, you can certainly just select any of these files. So say, for example, marketing deck V1 in this case here, if I click on that, it's going to light up a few options up here in the toolbar. Similarly, I could also hit the show more actions dot dot dot. And it's also going to show me very much the same type of options that are on the toolbar. Again, this is a very common paradigm across a lot of Microsoft tools. But when you do this, you can select an option here that says copy link. Again, there's a copy link up here in the in the toolbar. When you do that, it gives you this interface, this pop up. And that's exactly what Joy was mentioning just now is you can easily. So notice that it shows you a couple of things. Do you want to get the link to it directly in Teams? Or maybe for somebody who's not directly in that team, you want to grab a link to it that's in SharePoint so they could just get it straight from the browser. Um, it's already pre-highlighted, so you just hit copy in this case. And when you do that now, I have that link in the clipboard so I can go back to a post, for example, and I could um, I could go to any, any channel post, but I'll just do it here because it's easy. If I just pasted it straight in, it's pretty ugly being quite honest with you, you know, so just do a quick um, control V and you'll see that, OK, there's the link that it copied to that. There's no reason whatsoever I couldn't just post that. And if I do, then it's there and people can click on it and it'll take you to that file, right? But something that you could do just to make it a little bit more consumable and easier to read 
is you could format that as a link itself if you wanted to. Um, and so the way to do that is you've got to, inside a conversation, you've got to first expand this box to get more formatting options. Again, that's this little guy right here, the first um, icon just underneath the conversations box. You click that, it expands this box open, gives you a whole number of other things that you can do, of which one of them is you can actually create a link. So if I wanted to, I could say this is the you know marketing document or marketing deck v1 in this case and then i'll just highlight that whole thing hit link and again this is something i think most of you are very familiar with doing because we do this a lot right so you insert that now now when i send that post it is again a link the exact same link as it is here it just formatted nicer right so just easier to be able to understand that in context so certainly when you can grab links to files and then share them wherever you're sharing them that's preferable to do so. Um, we'll go back to files and show there's a couple of other things that I think are uh, useful to point out. Um, your ability right here inside of Teams to reorganize content is really pretty slick. Whether you've tried it or not or knew you could or not, um, I can literally gra drag and drop files around in this case here. So, you know, if I do have the need for these folders, this kind of folder way of structuring things, for example, um, I can take any of these files and just drag them around. And when I drag them around, uh, it's going to work just like you expect it would in Windows Explorer. It's going to move those files, drag them from where you had them into different folders and so forth. I'm not sure if it actually did that just now or not, but um, you can organize files inside of this interface by dragging and dropping. One of uh, a really clever thing to do when you have a series of folders so for example, here I've got assets and then within that I've got some other folders and so forth and you're just kind of struggling to just remember or find easily where these files are. Again, it's giving you a breadcrumb trail, but you know, let's say you just wanted to see quickly all the files that are needed even inside the folders. I got this tip from Joy because I think it's great, is you can absolutely create a view. So I'm up here looking at all documents. You can create a view through the SharePoint interface in this case to basically say, OK, well, I just want to see all the files without folders. So I've got a view here that I created called no folders A to Z because I automatically sorted it just by name. And when you do so, look at what this does. It's magic. It basically just flattens out all of the files inside of that particular uh, channel with no folders so that you can very easily see um, that these are all the files that are contained. OK, and then sorting them in some way. I think that's a really useful and clever way to do that. Any additional thoughts on that, Joy, and how you've seen that kind of thing work for customers? Yeah, it it can help kind of sort through. Because I personally, I've been drinking the SharePoint Kool-Aid for a long time. Flat architecture, flat architecture, flat architecture. Mm -hmm. So I'm used to just being able to see what I'm looking for. Maybe it's in views, maybe it's grouped, but I don't have to dig for it. So it's kind of made me lazy. Now I don't want to have to dig for content. So yeah. I'll do that. I will I will click the button. If you would highlight it there, it says open in SharePoint. Um, and we'll spare you all the details. If you're interested, let us know and I'll go tonight record a video that kind of shows how to do this. Just let us know your interest level. But I open in SharePoint, I create a view and I tell it to show all items without folders. And then I save that as my cleverly named no folder view, <laughs> right? Call it what it is. That way you don't have to guess. And anyone can use that from any file tab in any channel for that team. Yeah, absolutely. Extremely useful way of being able to, again, quickly be able to figure out and find what you're looking for. You know, you certainly could use, for example, the search option, which we haven't necessarily drilled into too deeply in any of our previous webinars, but you know, if I knew I'm looking for a file, for example, that's saying marketing something or rather, I could just begin by searching for marketing. Again, the way that search works in Teams is you're going to get this sort of left hand rail side of results. And then you can then uh, further refine that based off of these three primary categories, messages, people or files. So in this case, I'm going to click files. And then even if this list is just too big, you can certainly filter it even further in this case. And OK, I know that for what I'm looking is in a particular team, for example, it's in the Mark 8 project team. I'm going to filter that further. 
And when I do that, it's gonna, okay, that's a consumable list of search results. Great, there's that marketing deck right there at the bottom. If I click on that, again, just a really well thought out way that they built the interface. It just opens that document right inside of Teams again for me to be able to view. So it's really, it's really pretty nice in terms of being able to find content as well through search. Um, okay, so I know we're kind of getting closer up to time here, and I want to make sure that we left some time for some additional questions. But I did want to point out at least one other thing. Maybe if Joy's got a couple of other things she wants to talk about with files too, but I wanted to point out at least one other thing that I think I found to be useful. And again, the, the goal here is just however you can set this up so that your team can most easily access and interact with files that are important to them to be able to get their work done. But you know, again, you've got this toolbar across the top that we mentioned for creating new files, uploading, syncing through OneDrive, copying the link, et cetera. There's this option here that says add cloud storage. And you know, you might think to yourself, well, what does that mean? Like, what am I doing? Like adding cloud storage. And depending on the way that your team's administrators have configured this within your tenant, you may or may not see a number of these things here. Um, but just know that what Microsoft has made available to you inside of Teams is the ability to connect to uh, mostly third party document management systems like Dropbox or Box or Ignite, et cetera, et cetera. So if you wanted to, or if you had the ability or the need to be able to tie in existing file content into this library so that you had access to it and everybody on the team had access to it, you could certainly tie into any of these other uh, sources as well. But the one that I found most useful, even if your administrator turned all these others off, is the fact that you can also add storage from SharePoint in this case. So it doesn't exactly mean what it sounds like. Like I'm just adding more SharePoint storage. It's like, no, what you're really doing is you're giving another way to kind of pull in content from another location into this view inside your channel. So again, kind of hinting at this whole notion of talking about tabs and things like that in a future webinar. But as an example of this, like maybe I'm in the market project team, maybe I wanted to pull in some content from the retail team or the operations team in this case. I could grab that here from this interface, click through the wizard and say next. And then what do I want to grab out of that? Well, I just want to grab, uh, this one didn't have a good set of things. Let's try another one. So retail, okay. So there's a couple of different libraries here that I could grab out of retail images or documents. So if I said documents in this case, when I add this folder by doing this add storage, which you'll see here in a second, is it's actually again just linking a view of that particular content and cleverly named retail documents. In this case, that's the name of the team. So this team here and then those documents. Uh, there's a special kind of icon here. I don't know if it can change this view so you can see it a little bit. I'll change this to tiles so you can see that in a little bit bigger view. As soon as Teams refreshes, I think my, my network bandwidth is getting close to exhausting itself here at the moment. Okay, there it goes. But you see it's got this little linked from SharePoint icon here on the library. So what that's doing is when you click on that, it's basically going to take you to the documents that are contained in the libraries for this retail team. Again, this is assuming I had access to this, um, but you'll notice I didn't even navigate away from the research and development channel. So again, that's pretty useful, I feel like. I think that there are times when, depending on how you've structured content and so forth in the organization, there may be a need to be able to pull in views of content across a number of different teams into a single location because that just makes it easier for people to get to. OK. Yep. All right. So there was a question. It says, will a view using metadata in SharePoint show in Teams? And I know, Joy, that you were addressing that. Mm -hmm as well but i thought that maybe it would be a good idea to answer that to everybody else because i have a feeling that that person's not the only one who's asking that i'm so. sure you are right mm -hmm. yes your custom metadata will now show up in the files tab i think that's been around for just a little while now a couple months maybe yep. and you can use it to a degree now i'm a little sad that we don't yet have the filter and the details panes in our files tab views 
but you can use that metadata. You can sort by it, filter by it, and utilize any custom views you've created there. So yes, mm -hmm. definitely go to SharePoint, create that metadata, use that metadata. Yeah, that would be a good one to also showcase in the future webinar, just the mm -hmm. how that's set up and then how you actually can see that in Teams. Because again, it's really, it's pretty seamless and really slick because again, it yep. just gives your users that much more information inside the Teams app where they don't have to bounce out to something else. Absolutely. And we've got two more spe team specific questions. Is there a best practice set up for a group that is new to Teams? Um, if we're talking about creating the team for a group, um, I would definitely say start from Teams. If there's a SharePoint site that, that that group is already using, you can absolutely connect to it. If it's a modern group of FIDE, it has an Office 365 group associated with it, SharePoint site. If not, you can go do those things and then connect Teams to it. If there's no SharePoint site, no nothing, start from Teams. Whatever your tenant admin has set up or your Teams admin has set up in the tenant, that will be your defaults for any new team created, uh, such as can they use the Giphys and the stickers and can, oh, let me think, can members add or create channels? Some of that can be handled at the tenant level. Uh, so whatever is set there will apply, but that way you'll get SharePoint, Planner, OneNote, Outlook, all that good stuff. Yeah. Speaking of Outlook, we've got another question. We've created a new team within Teams and would like to have a team shared calendar. In classic SharePoint, we would have created a classic calendar and then mm. added that as a tab in Teams, which you absolutely can do. However, yeah. with modern SharePoint, how would we go about creating the shared calendar? Well, my friend, this is Jeff that asked this question. Jeff, <laughs> my friend, when you create a team, you get a, an Outlook account for that, or inbox, I should say, for everyone in that group that's part of your team, part of that's a shared calendar. So you do get a group calendar in exchange, not SharePoint. Right. Because Teams is in the business of bringing stuff to you, right? And this is one of those things it can bring to you, a group calendar. And there's even a web part for that group calendar you can put on your SharePoint page. Just mm -hmm. say Right? It's all better together. Teams yeah. isn't taking the place of anything except Skype. But other than that, it, it just helps all the apps work together. Yeah, I think that that uh, emphasizes that we should probably have another webinar that's dedicated to what has been formally referred to as Office 365 Groups, but has been recently renamed as Microsoft 365 Groups. Thank you, Microsoft. Thank you. Um, but the the whole thing around Microsoft 365 groups and, and kind of understanding what what gets created when a Microsoft 365 group gets created and probably more importantly than that is what's getting created from where when you create yeah. it. Are you creating are you creating a team are you creating a SharePoint site are you creating a Yammer community are you creating a planner board because depending on from where you create uh, whatever you're trying to create it does slightly different things with the Microsoft 365 group behind the scenes. So I think it would be a great webinar for us to focus on that topic. I'm make, I'm this taking notes. I'm <laughs> taking this webinar series will go away. It's never going to go away. No. Uh, so we have, oh, let's see, a current SharePoint site for a couple of years. We're just getting teams. Is there a way to connect those two SharePoint sites? So um, this is being asked by KB. We're going to probably want to get your contact info. I'm sure Stacy in her marketing mm -hmm. magic probably has a way for us to get in touch with you. I will send you some information because yes, uh, really you don't have to create a brand new SharePoint site. You can tell Teams there's already one out there, but it's going to need some things. It's going to need that to be a modern SharePoint site. It's going to need it to have a, a group associated with it. Yeah. So what I'm do is find you that info or maybe Richard will one of us will we're going to arm wrestle yeah. for it yeah. <laughs> and uh, it'll kind of give you the foundation of what you need so teams can be aware find that SharePoint site and just make it all one happy family for you 
Yeah, yeah. It, it, it gives us an opportunity to use some of our favorite jargon, which is groupifying and or teamifying. Um, sometimes yeah, you hubify, but that's a different webinar. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. So there's some there's some things that need to be you know make sure that everything's working the way it should. But yeah, you certainly can do that. Perfect. And Lori has an awesome question. Mm. Does the shared calendar require Exchange Online? Yeah. So again, mm. this is all going to be part of that webinar. Then the Microsoft 365 groups, formerly Office 365 groups, um, in order for groups which is a cloud only kind of capability to work. Uh, yeah, your mailboxes do have to be in Office 365. It's just by design the way that that works. So um, whenever you're creating again a new team or you're creating a SharePoint site and that is creating one of these Microsoft 365 groups behind the scenes, that shared inbox and calendar that's that's being created inside of Exchange mm -hmm. Online. So yeah, you got to have that calendar piece up there in the cloud. And if you don't, don't despair because every SharePoint site still has the ability to create a calendar. Yes, it is that. I'm sorry, SharePoint. I love you. Ugly classic calendar, yeah. but you can still utilize that in your tabs. It just might not be awesome if you go to your mobile app. So exactly. there's you can still make this work. It's just not as awesome. Exactly. She said we'll get there someday. Yes, you will. <laughs> and then it will be rock star level collaboration. You guys are so awesome. You have the best questions. We appreciate all of the interaction. Honestly, Richard and I usually stress like the night before we have to do a webinar to prep for it. And then as soon as we get online, we're like, man, this is the best ever. It's ridiculous. We can even call this a job. <laughs> you all think this is so fun. Oh, mm -hmm. let's see. Is there a best practice? Oh, no, we already did that. I did it. No? Oh, got you. We got the questions answered. Awesome. Fantastic. Well, again, we only you know, went it's over. Yeah, I mean, but you have more questions, please do connect with us. I've got the slide up here that uh, has our contact info. So you can uh, tweet at us, please do. You can send us email. The QR codes there are to our LinkedIn profiles. So feel free to connect with us on LinkedIn as well, too. We love connecting with everybody and um, shoot us more questions. Um, also, please do, as you can see there, join us for our next webinar, which is going to be on Thursday. We're going to drill even further into tabs and kind of what's that all about and what are the benefits of using different tabs and so forth. And are there is there a case where, you know, there are too many tabs in a channel? And I think not really, quite honestly, you, whatever you can do to bring information or application and content to your users easily by all means do it right so um anything else joy or stacy before we kind of tie it up no that's it okay so much oh lori lori said thank you so thank you lori thank you richard thank you stacy thank you everybody this is so fun awesome. absolutely thanks thank everybody you. have a great day bye, bye.